Hey everybody, it's Joel Tappen here and I'm going to take you on a quick tour of the new Downfall Vassal Module. Now most of the stuff in the Vassal Module is going to be self-explanatory, so I'm only going to show you the things that might not be uh, as intuitive as others. First of all, right-clicking is your friend in Vassal, so right-clicking on a unit will produce a pop-up menu that will give you some options on what you can do with that particular game piece. Now to increase the strength of pieces, you're going to use that right click feature or when you right click on it, you'll see that there is a keyboard shortcut. I have done something different aesthetically to the module. It, rather than having the pips uh, go around all four corners of the game piece for four step units, I've created it so that the pips are only at the top of the unit, thus showing the current strength of units at any given time. Now to discover you know how many steps a unit can possibly have you'll have to experiment uh, if you don't have the uh, physical game handy you know or you don't remember it's easy to discover you just right click on a unit and if the increase is not there it can't be increased any larger so for example 11th army here if you go up to two steps it won't let you increase any further that shows you that it is in fact a two-step max unit. And of course, flipping a unit over will produce its uh, mechanized side and uh, while preserving the, uh, the pip strength, which actually I think ergonomically works a little bit smoother than in the physical game. But there you go. So lots of right-click features on game pieces, including a way to discover the aerial range of your air units, your air support units, and uh, they do overlap one another. So if you want to see... For example, in this situation, you see this dark band here. This is where the Soviets are going to have uh, air superiority uh, in this area and in the light pink where the uh, gray doesn't um, actually reach. So just kind of a handy little tool that you can use. So the first thing you're going to need to do when you load up a scenario is you'll need to set up the event decks. To do that, you want to go to the out of play window. When you go into out of play window, you'll see the, uh, the all the cards that are not currently in play, but there's a very important toolbar button that when you press this button, it will prepare the event deck for you. So at this current time now, the event deck is uh, stacked properly. So when you hover your, your mouse over the, uh, the upcoming or the draw pile, it'll show you only the topmost card. The current event can be seen obviously here, and then the same thing with discard. No matter how many cards are in the discard pile, it'll only show you the top one. If you need to see more than that, you can right click and choose to draw multiple cards and rummage through the deck yourself. Remember, when you choose to draw multiple cards, or excuse me, to draw specific cards, you have to select one from the list, click OK, and then when you drag away, it'll show you the game piece. So there you go. Now for units like this, or for cards like this, events that have potential for OKH or OKW air support, right clicking on it you can choose to have the option for OKW or for OKH. The layer may not always superimpose directly over the icon because the icon is not consistently positioned on all of the cards, so just be aware of that. The card for the weather does not move. You just simply right click on it and you choose which weather you want. So there's no need to stack them or anything like the scenario instructions say. You can just simply select which weather you want. So mud, you can choose snow, fair. Obviously this scenario for the campaign begins with snow so we'll leave it there. So those are the those are probably the most important things to know. Uh, the next thing you want to do when you set up the scenario is all of the uh, orders tokens are in this draw cup and the draw cup shows you how many uh, tokens are in the draw cup. You can draw them out randomly uh, by just pulling, dragging away. It'll give you a random pull every time. It'll only ever show you the topmost one. Now, as you drag away, it'll kind of show you what it's going to be, so no cheating. Now, to do this really quick, all you have to do is click on the Fill Action Track button on the toolbar. It'll take about nine seconds, and don't ask me why it takes nine seconds. I have tried everything to make it really snappy, and that's the best I can do. But it will fill up the track. And then what's really neat is when you execute an order, say I want to execute an order that's going to leave an empty space here. For example, the Soviets, let's imagine the Soviets are going to use this order here. So we'll drag that guy away. I'll show you something about that in just a minute. Then we're going to need for the next player to, you know, fill up the track. To do that, all you got to do is hit the fill action track button again, and it'll slide everything down and drag out a ra random uh, token and put it up here at the top. So kind of a neat feature. You can do that all manually yourself easy enough. 
I just find that um, it's about the same amount of time if I do it randomly myself or use the expedited button. It depends on how many markers you're, you're shifting around. Obviously for setup, it's faster to do this. Now something about orders that's kind of cool, if you right click on the order, you can choose to make it the active order. I recommend that you do this. You can also choose to send it to your planning spot on your, uh, your, your player display. If I do, do that, let me show you something over here. We go over to the planning display. There is already marker in the planning. See, the module doesn't enforce the game rules there. So you'll need to remember that you can't put it there in planning if you already have a marker there. So instead, maybe we'll just right click and send it to the order display and it'll put it in the appropriate slot. Another th cool thing that you can do is when you uh, when you do this, you're supposed to pay the six initiative and you can do this yourself by simply picking up the token and moving it six spaces. You can do that randomly or, or, or manually yourself, or you can right click on the order and choose to increase initiative. It will increase the initiative by the specified amount and it'll move the marker for you. It'll also generate an error, uh, and I don't know why, It'll only do it the very first time, and I can't find, there's no reason for the error. I can't find any anything wrong with my syntax, but there you go. Now, if you want to do this all manually, when you drag and drop these initiative markers, it'll pick up the initiative value of whatever slot you stick it in. So you can do stuff manually. You can also use the toolbar buttons up here to increase the Soviet initiative uh, manually uh, by one. There's nothing to move it backwards because there's not a whole lot of times in the game, in fact, I can't think of any times in the game where the marker moves backwards, unless you make a mistake and need to correct something. In that case, you'll have to do things uh, manually. So those are some of, the, some of the neat automation features that will expedite gameplay. When you're using your game pieces, let's say, uh, we're gonna set up an attack situation here. If you do a Control A or right click to uh, produce a marker, you can put, an attack arrow marker. And then if you do a control, if you select that and do a control C and then drag away, it'll make a duplicate so you can move stuff around. Let's say I want to kind of plan out my attacks for Operation Uranus. Uh, these are some of the things I can do here to kind of show who's being attacked and how many attacks have I set up, especially when you have a limitation, like I can only do three attacks. This is a way to keep track of those things, and I recommend you leave the markers out until the order is fully executed so you don't accidentally do too many orders or too many attacks. If you want to leave a label on something, which is handy for play by email, left click and do a carriage return on your keyboard, and you can do uh, you can put in a note like P for primary, or you can even type it out if you want to, and it'll uh, it'll put that on the uh, on the arrow itself. You can also right click to place a isolated marker, but it's only ever going to put isolated ones because generally you don't plop down isolated threes. Isolated ones get flipped over. So assuming those are already on the board, that's why I've limited it to just the isolated ones. You can also put, oh yeah, control markers. And then if you're new to Vassal, if you double click on a stack to expand it, select a single marker, like I want to select just the control, but I want to put it at the bottom of the stack. If you do a down arrow key, it'll put it at the bottom of the stack. And you might be wondering how I rotated these arrows. I forgot to show you. You can right click or you can just left click and then use the side arrow, arrow left, arrow right to spin these guys around any way you want. Uh, arrow keys on your keyboard will do that. To complete your order, when everything is said and done, you can just click on the little clean up order button on the toolbar, and that will get rid of all the attack arrows. It'll also remove the red band around the active order. I uh, think that those are the main things you'll want to be aware of. Um, oh, when you go into your hand, the cards should be in the hand properly. If, you've, uh, if you're starting up a scenario, some of them will have you draw out uh, a number of random cards from the deck. The, the draw card buttons in your hand window will produce that for you. So if I want to draw a couple of OKW cards, I open up the Soviet hand window, click on the draw axis card, and it'll pull a couple cards out of the deck. You can drag them away to kind of separate the stack, because they actually are stacked one on top of one another in the uh, leftmost slot. You can actually drag them away and reposition as you desire. And uh, 
yeah, I think that's about all we need to know about that. Uh, same thing with the with the allies. You can draw uh, Western Allied um, access cards for the OKH. All that stuff can be done in your hand window. Out of play cards are in the out of play cards window. We showed you how to prepare the event deck from this window, but if you need to reintroduce or excuse me introduce new cards, you can do this by right clicking on these stacks. You can choose to specify a particular unit, uh, and then say if we're going to bring in. Blitz campaign. Let's say the instructions of the game tell you to introduce this card. Click OK. Drag away. There's your Blitz campaign. Same thing with the events here. If I need to draw a specific card like Mediterranean Dominance, I can click OK. Drag away. There it is. If I need VE Day, I can click on... Whoops, I keep doing the wrong one. Specify cards, VE Day, or you can drag them all out and separate them if you want. And there you go. If you need to put a particular, let's say you're setting up a scenario yourself, you want to do a new scenario or something, and you need to set up a, a deck situation, this button here, what it does is it shuffles the all of the cards that are in this deck here on the map. It then shuffles all the cards that are in this stack, and then it takes whatever card is here and puts it on top of the assembled deck. So shuffle, shuffle, takes these cards, puts them on top, takes this card, puts it on the top. That's what this button uh, actually produces. So if you should ever need to do that manually, that's how you can do it. Uh, let's see, is there anything else? Oh, to refill the draw cup. If you click on this button here, it'll return all the orders from your order displays. It's not going to affect this track, but it's going to take everything from your order displays here and it's going to plop it back into the draw cup. So kind of a handy tool. Uh, to reseed the action track, what this, this button does, let me just kind of zoom out one more step here so we can see this a little bit better. When we do this command here, reseed, it's going to take everything out of here. Let's say I'm the Soviet player and there's no orders for me to carry out here. I can do a reseed for, uh, I think it's one initiative. Hit this button here, count the nine. It takes nine seconds to do, and when it's done, what it basically did is it took everything in here, plopped it back in here, and then reseeded it from uh, from bottom to top. So that's again is a is a handy tool, um, quite a bit faster than in the physical game. Uh, all of your eliminated units, they're going to go in this window here. Uh, so when you kill a piece, like say we're going to kill some Romanians here in just a second, to eliminate the unit, it's going to show up over here in this window. Your uh, player displays, uh, force pool is going to have everything that's available to you at the scenario start. Oh, I know, I need to show you the weather. So for the weather marker, let's imagine the weather marker is way back here or something. Notice the value for weather adjusts as you plop it down somewhere. So some players may not like the little numeric thing on top. I find it useful just in case Vassal starts screwing up uh, so to make sure I have an accurate count of things. Alrighty, so to adjust the weather, you can roll a couple dice up here on the toolbar to mark how far it's going to move from your marker. Let's say it's the western player's turn. Normally you take the marker, you put it over here, and then you'd roll two dice, and then you count out how many spaces and plop the marker down there. Well, with the Vassal module, all you got to do is actually right-click on it and choose to roll for weather, and it'll roll the dice, report the die roll result, and move the marker for you. It's just an expedited... Uh, way to uh, move things without sometimes dragging stuff around in Vassal. I don't know how, what your experience is, but sometimes on my Mac it it can uh, do some wonky stuff. Markers fly off places you don't intend, and this is just to circumvent that and just make things move a little bit more fluidly. I think that's just about it for the Vassal module instructions. I hope you enjoy the Va Vassal module. If you want to examine the uh, uh, the windows here on the toolbar, there is a player aid card. Uh, it shows you all your orders. You got a player aid card for both sides, the West and for the Soviets, showing your orders, what they do. There's both player aid cards. The first one is mostly combat stuff, and the second card is movement and miscellaneous things. And then there's a few procedures that are on playing card size uh, pieces in the physical game, and you can just hit the tab, and then you can select which one you want to see here on the right. So those are the player aid cards. Ah, 
whenever you move pieces around, it's going to put a move flag on it. To quickly get rid of those, hit the escape button on your keyboard. It's the same thing as hitting the move button on the toolbar. It just gets rid of all of those. To resolve an event, I forgot to show you this. Hit the resolve event button on your toolbar. And when you do this, it'll slide everything over. So kind of a handy way to expedite that procedure. The module will not alert you when it's time for an event. So you'll need to pay attention to where your marker ended up uh, and then flip it over to uh, you know show that there's a pending event if you hit or pass your event flag. I don't have that automated. You'll have to figure that out on your own and uh, just be alert to that, that possibility. There is minimal rules enforcement in the module. Like I said, I tried to make things um, pretty straightforward. The automation is just to expedite gameplay itself. Things that I found fiddly with the phys physical game, I just tried to automate that with Vassal. There is a button for a single die roll and a button for 2D, uh, 2D6s. And I think I did show you the uh, the buttons to move your initiative marker manually by one. It's not super snappy, but it will do it. So if I want to move the US up like four, just go one, two, three, four, and it'll move the marker. It lags a little bit, but um, it's, it's handy. It just keeps everything nice and tidy here on the turn track. The CHO, if you're in case you're wondering what these buttons are, <laughs> that's CHO. That's for campaign game. Operation Husky and Operation Overlord. These are the setup cards. I put this in the module just so you have a reference in case I made a mistake in the setups and uh, uh, you need to correct things yourself. Um, it was just an easier way for me to set the scenarios up. It, it, it's a, a time-consuming thing in Vassal to set the scenarios up for this particular game. So putting those in there made it easier for me and then I just decided to leave them just as a, um, a tool an aid. It doesn't hurt anything to have it in the module. But in case you're wondering what CHO is for, that's what it is. And I think that that is just about everything that's going on with the module. Markers are up here. Most of them you can produce from right click, but if you need to get the jets for the particular event, or if you need to, if you like to use the column or DRM plus minus buttons, you can drag them out of here, put them out here, and uh, they, they flip over and clone and delete and do all that cool stuff. Well, there you go. Scoring's not automated. That's going to be manual. So as you, you know, score things on here, make sure you move your victory track marker um, appropriately. Uh, it's not that fancy, guys. Sorry. But I think that that um, should give you a pretty good tour of the Vassal module. Hope you enjoy it. We'll be putting it out here uh, shortly, momentarily. We'll be uploading this to VassalEngine.org. Hope you enjoy the video. Hope you enjoy the module. And Happy New Year.